Hello. Um, when people think about ecology, they often think about National Geographic. They think about exotic places like tropical rainforests. They think about charismatic animals like lions and tigers. But really, you can learn just as much, if not more, about ecology by looking at very mundane things like pea aphids in the agricultural fields of Wisconsin. Um, this is a family portrait of pea aphids. It's a mother and her offspring. Um, they're feeding at the tip of an alfalfa stem. Now, as you might gather from the name, pea aphids do feed on peas, but they also feed on beans, clover, and, of course, alfalfa. Um, they have mouth parts that are like hypodermic needles. They stick their mouths into the uh, plant and suck out plant juices. This is a picture that keeps me awake at night, quite literally. Um, this illustrates one of the problems that I've been working on for all of my adult career. Basically, it shows pea aphids in a field of alfalfa over the course of about a month. Starting in the 27th of May through the 30th of June, the population initially is low, it increases, and then it declines. This illustrates one of the two fundamental questions of ecology. The things that professional ecologists ask is questions are, what explains how fast populations increase? And then, what explains the populations stop when they stop increasing and start to decline. So in the next four minutes, I want to explain what I know about this for P aphids. So the first question, population increase. If you look at an aphid, you see that she's really just a, um, a baby producing machine. Um, her entire body is devoted to reproduction. Not only is her body devoted to reproduction, but her offspring also have their offspring um, developing within them. So each female has not only her daughters, but also her granddaughters in them. Females can produce about five offspring a day. Those offspring then develop in about um, 10 days to reproduce themselves. Aphids have also done a really cool trick. They've done away with males. So over the summer, they reproduce asexually, without sex. Each female just produces an identical genetic clone of herself. In terms of population growth, this really makes sense. If a female can, reproduce, uh, can substitute all of her male offspring with female offspring, those females reproduce, the males don't, and you automatically double the population size. Um, in general, ecologists only keep track of the females in populations, not the males. Even in sexual populations, like humans, you always can assume that there are enough willing and able males around to impregnate all of the females. So you really just need to keep track of the females. Um, if you actually do some back of the envelope kind of calculations, if you start with a single female, you just keep her, let her reproduce, let her offspring reproduce. At the end of five months, you'd get enough aphids to cover the state of Wisconsin to a depth of 10 feet. After about a year and a half, you would have a mass of aphids equal to the mass of the known universe expanding at the rate of the speed of light. This doesn't happen. That really gets to the second question that I want to address, which is what causes populations to stop increasing? This is the general answer. Pea aphids are the popcorn of the insect world. All predators love to eat them. For example, this predator, the seven-spotted ladybug. Um, there's a variety of different predators. This is my favorite predator, a parasitic wasp. Now, to understand what these parasitic wasps do, you have to think of the movie Alien, because the cre creator of the movie actually got inspiration from these parasitic wasps. The wasps inject an egg into the aphid. The egg then develops within the still living aphid, eats it out, and eventually kills it to transform into a wasp of the next generation. They're extremely effective at what they do, killing aphids. So what I've hoped to illustrate is these two basic ecological questions. Um, what explains how fast populations increase and what causes those population increase to actually stop. I also hope I've illustrated an important lesson in ecology, which is if you go out into nature, pick something, really anything, and study it really, really hard, you actually learn a tremendous amount about ecology. Thank you.